Today on Psy Guys, exothermic reactions. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Ryan. Welcome to Psy Guys. On today's episode, exothermic reactions and hot ice. An exothermic reaction is one that gives off more energy than it requires to occur in the first place. In this case, that energy is given off as heat. The equipment you're going to need for this experiment is a pot to boil your solution down in, measuring cup and a measuring spoon, a container with a sealable lid for your concentrated solution, and a bowl for your ice bath. And the ingredients are vinegar and baking soda. The reaction we're creating today isn't dangerous, but it's always a good idea to wear a lab coat or apron and goggles just in case of spills and splashes. To start, put two liters of vinegar into a pot. Then slowly add 140 grams or eight and a half tablespoons of baking soda to your pot of vinegar. Do this slowly or you'll get a violent reaction that will look like a baking soda volcano. Stir your solution until all the baking soda has been mixed in. The solution we have mixed is too diluted to be useful, so we will have to make our solution more concentrated. Place your pot on the stove and boil your solution on the stove top to concentrate it. Boil your solution over low heat instead of high heat. Boiling your solution at high temperatures will cause it to turn yellow or brown. Boiling your solution over low heat will take multiple hours, so be patient. You can stop when there's around 200 milliliters of solution in your pot, but the easiest way to tell it's done boiling is the formation of a crystal precipitate on the surface of the water. If you have crystals in your solution, try to stir them in. You may need to add a small amount of vinegar to get all the crystals to dissolve into our solution. Once you remove the solution from the heat, pour your concentrated solution into a sealable container and put a liquid seal lid on it immediately. You may want to attach an elastic band around it to prevent the lid from popping off. Place your container of solution into an ice bath to cool it. Make sure your container is not fully submerged in water in case the lid pops open. Alternatively, you can place your container into the fridge. The ice bath should take about an hour or so to cool. The fridge will take much longer. Once your solution has been cooled, you will have a great example of a supercooled liquid. Once your solution has been cooled, remove it from the fridge or ice bath and place it on the counter. Be careful not to shake or bump your container as that may cause the reaction to start. Gently remove the cover from your container. You can start your hot ice reaction by touching it with a spoon or a finger of a gloved hand. This is a great example of an exothermic reaction and spontaneous crystallization. The crystallization in this experiment is the same process as our previous episode where we grew alum crystals. The difference is our hot ice crystals grow much faster. Instead of taking hours, they take minutes and the shape of their crystalline structures is also different. Let's look at this reaction a little closer. A vinegar molecule looks like this, and a baking soda molecule looks like this. When we mix baking soda into vinegar, the hydrogen breaks off the vinegar molecule, and the sodium, hydrogen, and one of the oxygen breaks free of the baking soda, leaving us with carbon dioxide gas, which floats out of our solution as bubbles. The sodium attaches to what is left of our vinegar molecule, to create sodium acetate. The leftover hydrogen and oxygen molecules attach together to create H2O, which is water. We are now left with an aqueous or liquid sodium acetate solution. This solution is very diluted. This means that there are more water molecules than sodium acetate molecules. By boiling our solution, we remove some of the water molecules. The more water molecules we remove from our solution, the higher our concentration of sodium acetate gets. Once our solution has reached the correct concentration, we place it into the fridge or ice bath to cool. Once it is cooled, you have created a supercooled liquid. A supercooled liquid is a liquid that has been cooled below its natural freezing point. When a liquid is supercooled, it really wants to become a solid. Our solution wants to become a solid so badly that any type of disturbance, even a grain of dust, will cause our reaction to start and our liquid will turn into a solid. When we touch our solution, the molecules of sodium acetate start to connect together into crystals. This is called spontaneous crystallization. One of the really interesting things about this reaction is, 
as our solution crystallizes, it creates an exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction is a reaction that produces more energy than is required to start it. So the excess energy is released. In this experiment, the energy is released as heat. We measured the temperature of the heat from this reaction and it reached 52 degrees Celsius. This is the same chemical solution and reaction that is in the hot packs we use to warm our hands in the winter. You can redo this experiment multiple times by sealing your container, placing it in boiling water until the solid becomes a liquid again, and recooling it in the fridge or in an ice bath. Well, that's it for exothermic reactions and hot ice. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and comment below. And like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And as always, if you have any questions about this experiment or about science in general, feel free to drop us a comment uh, down in the bottom there or on Facebook. Bye-bye. Bye. Here at SciGuys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, record them and submit them to us as a video reply to this video. But remember, always get your parents' permission before you submit any videos to YouTube.